first episode of new makeup releases in 2024. I can't believe I just took my driver's license picture with my hair looking like this, but... Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. We are talking about new makeup releases in 2024. If you guys haven't seen, I did do like a new makeup releases video of like, do you need it? sort of thing. But this one we're actually just going to be talking about new makeup releases and giving you my unfiltered thoughts and opinions on these makeup releases. So before we get into this video, if you guys are new here, my name is Stacy. I feature unfiltered makeup opinions and honest reviews. So if you like content like that, definitely hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. And let's get into this video. I have some thoughts about new makeup. <laughs> new makeup that has been released. I do. I first wanted to talk about, there is a new palette from KKW Beauty, and I've seen a couple of creators talking about this palette. I know it's a little bit like older of a release, but I have to, I have to find it. So the KKW, or SKKN, I'm sorry, it used to be KKW. Now I guess it's SKKN Makeup by Kim Kardashian. It used to be KKW at one point in time. And I guess this palette is actually available now, but I wanted to talk about this palette because I truly feel like this color story has been released before. So if you guys didn't know, Kim released a new collection and it came with an eyeshadow palette. And it says that the I need to scoot over. What am I doing? Let's scoot over so we can see what this is. But it says that the collection is inspired by Kim's iconic smoky eye and nude lip. It includes a soft matte lip color, which is $32. Um, there's 10 shades of this that are full coverage velvety matte lipsticks. That in and of itself, we'll, we'll talk about those. It comes with new lip liners, which are $22 each, and there's 15 shades of that. And then come... The last thing in this collection was a classic matte eyeshadow palette that retails for $50 and has 12 warm and cool tone shadows in silky matte finishes. It was released on January 26th on the website and I think, where is SKKN skin? Where is that also available? Is it available on Ulta? I know at one point KKW was available on Ulta. But in any case, this was the first thing that I really wanted to talk about because this eyeshadow palette in particular really struck a nerve with me because it reminds me a lot of a recent makeup release, not only in 2023, but also makeup releases that we have seen from more affordable brands as well. So what I'm talking about is the... The Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. I'm going to actually pull that out because I, I actually have Natasha Denona's I Need a Nude Palette. And this is a all like cool tone and some neutral and some warm, some warmer, warm-ish shades in this eyeshadow palette. But when I looked at the SKKN by Kim Kardashian and I saw that all matte eyeshadow palette, it totally reminded me of the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude. Now this one isn't all matte. It actually has like shimmer shades in it as well. And it has some like beautiful wet shimmery shades. But it definitely reminded me of this palette. And then it also reminded me of, because it's all matte, like ColourPop came out with like an all matte nude eyeshadow palette. It was a 30 pan eyeshadow palette and that eyeshadow palette was released, oh gosh, I don't even remember when, but it also reminded me of the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox palette and the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette. I feel like we've seen this color story from SKKN like just done so, so many times and to say like I've not tried her formula and I'm not seeing the reviews yet, so I can't give you guys, like, a, I can't give you a formulation comparison because I have no idea, like, what the formulation is with her products. But I can definitely say that for $69, you can buy the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. Or you can go to ColourPop and you can still buy Stone Cold Fox, the Mattes Palette, or the Bare Necessities Palette. And I think those ones are, like, 
$32. So you're saving yourself like $20 by purchasing something like that as opposed to $50 for a palette that's been made a lot. I also want to talk to you guys about the the lip liners and the lipsticks because I saw the swatches for these and it says that it comes with 10 full coverage velvety matte lipsticks but looking at the shade range like these all look exactly the same 100% the same I feel like you could buy one of these lip liners and be okay but it matches like literally every other nude <laughs> lip liner out there and they all match each other and the same thing for those lipsticks. They are they all look exactly the same when you see the swatches. I will try and link down below the reel that Trend Mood One has. She has a really good reel of like live swatching these lipsticks and these lip glosses, and they're not they're not that impressive. Like they all look the same. That was one makeup release that is a little bit older of a makeup release, but I definitely wanted to mention it in this video and also mention that like there are eyeshadow palettes that are way better out there that are way more affordable with the same color story but I also wanted to talk about the Glam Light Betty Boop collection because this collection is really interesting to me now Betty Boop was an icon back in the 20s and 30s she actually originated as a black and white cartoon and then she was colorized later on I don't know when she was colorized but <laughs> Now, Glamlight is known for their absolutely beautiful, over-the-top collaborations. One of the collaborations that I have is the Scooby-Doo The First Collection with the All Green Palette and the All Purple Palette. They've done a Barbie collection. They've done a Ghost Face collection, Friday the 13th. Like, Glamlight has done some really beautiful collaborations, and they're always very colorful in nature. And when I thought of Betty Boop, it really brought me back to like the 30s, the 1930s when smoky eyes were a really big thing. And it also brought me back to like the very classic 30s and even into the 40s beauty of like a really bold red lip and then a very neutral eye with like very long looking lashes. There, there was not a lot of color in makeup during the time that Betty Boop was created. And taking a look at the lip swatches from the Betty Boop collection, like I think it's totally on par to have a red lip. But when I saw the palette, and the palette had like reds, lots of reds, and it also had like a pop of blue, and it does have some of those like grungier tones in there, I honestly was expecting something a little bit more neutral for classic beauty with the classic red lip like a bold lip that they were advertising with a classic almost neutral palette and they could have thrown some reds in there to kind of like play on like the red theme but overall this is honestly not what I was expecting out of an eyeshadow palette for Betty Boop like I could also see them doing a color story really similar to the Natasha Denona Xenon palette where it was very monochromatic because Betty Boop was a black and white cartoon for so 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 long. I could have seen them doing something like that but then they also released like Ghost Face and Friday the 13th and those color stories would have matched well with like the Betty Boop cartoon that was in black and white but like do they really want to do a a color story like that again. So it was really surprising to see that the majority of the shades in this eyeshadow palette are just like shades of red. And I feel like they could have gone a little bit more playful. Like they could have gone that classic 1920s, 1930s, 1940s beauty with that blue undertoned red lipstick, the monochromatic eyeshadow, whether maybe even half of it was, you know, blacks grays and whites and the other half was like neutrals that would have been actually kind of fun to me I think I think that would have been a lot of fun because you could create those very sultry black and white and clean beauty looks from the time of Betty Boop so this collection like the packaging is so stunning the lips are so stunning I think the cheek products 1930s and 40s actually women weren't really wearing a lot of blush it started to become more of a thing but it wasn't colors that were like this color. Usually the pigmentation of blushes was way darker. And I definitely think that the blushes just, 
it's a little bit off. Like it's a little bit off. I feel like it could have been a little bit darker and then it would have been more Betty Boop feeling to me. Cause like when you look at the colored version of the cartoon, she has bright red cheeks. Like I want bright red cheeks, just like Betty Boop. Like I'm, I'm not going to lie. So I kind of wish that this, this collection would have gone a little bit differently. It's still beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but like, it's definitely not what I expected. Like, House Labs has a new PhD hybrid lip glaze. It says it's a first of its kind skincare infused lip plumping glaze with burn free lip plumping after two weeks of continuous use. It's vegan, clean, cruelty free, and it's a four in one hybrid product. It combines a hydration of a lip oil, cushion of a balm, volumizing effect of a plumper, and high shine of a gloss. It says it has a peptide complex that the plumped lip appearance with cutting edge combination max lip volulip without any uncomfortable irritation and it has vegan collagen and prickly pear oil boost it it boosts the moisture barrier with an added hydration and lips feel nourished and smoother it'll come in six juicy burn free plumping shades at $26 each it has guava the shades are guava fig cocoa persimmon praline and macaron It'll be available February 7th. So this is interesting. It claims that it'll plump your lips over time, like a lasting plump over the course of two weeks. And it sounds like a, like it is a hybrid the lip, lip care product where it's like almost like a lip oil, but it's also like a lip balm. And it's also like a lip plumper and like a lip oil. So Honestly, $26 is a lot to ask for when it comes to any kind of lip product, but I can understand where they are coming from because it has like lip care, lip, we're going to call it lip care because that's what it is. It's lip care. It has lip care ingredients that plump your lips. And I'm like, from a marketing standpoint, this is an awesome launch for like the time that we're in because we're still in like the height of winter half of the half of the world is in winter and then half of the world is obviously you know in summer but like half the world like Europe and America are in winter we have cold weather right now but from a marketing standpoint this came out at a really good time I'm actually really surprised that they didn't bring it out sooner like for the new year like a month ago I'm really surprised that they're releasing it like in February but I also understand why they would be releasing it right before Valentine's Day because lips are big during Valentine's Day. I want my lips to feel good. I want them to look good. I don't want them to be dry from this winter weather. So look from a marketing standpoint, like they're releasing it at a really good time. I am really curious if this lives up to what they claim it'll do. And honestly, I would probably try this just because like I want to know if it actually will help my lips be plumper, fuller, and more nourished after two weeks of consistent use. And that's the other key word, two weeks of consistent use, consistent use. You have to use it continuously. So I would be interested to try the House Labs PHG hybrid lip glazes. I think they look really beautiful. Do I need like the darkest shade? No, because typically like a lip oil, you buy one shade and they all look exactly the same, especially on somebody who's so pasty pale like me. So I'd probably just get, you know, one of the lighter shades and call it a day, but I would love to see if it actually holds up to what it claims to do. Jesus. <laughs> so NYX is coming out with another lip plumper. Um, It's available now. It's called the Duck Plump. It is a duck plump high pigment plumping lip gloss in cherry spice. Get instant and overtime plumping, instant and overtime plumping for the ultimate injectionless pout. Feel the extreme plumping sensation powered by spicy ginger. It is also vegan and it retails for $13. It comes in one shade, transparent red. If a person, like if I have something burning on my lips, like typically... When you have an allergic reaction to a product, so like I, story time, story time. I had an eye cream that I got out of a BoxyCharm and it was an under eye cream and I go to put it on and all of a sudden I get like a burning sensation and my tears start going and I knew instantly it was a, it, an allergic reaction. I ended up having to pitch the product. But when you get a 
like burning sensation from your makeup that's like very long lasting like I know technically it's supposed to do that but people really don't want super intense burning sensation on their lips like the concept is really good it looks like it plumps and makes them look ducky but like I think the duck lip trend is like really over like I haven't seen people actually taking selfies even with like the duck lip trend in a while so why they would want to bring back the duck lip trend is beyond me so Ariana Grande's brand Ariane Beauty is actually coming out with a new collection it's the Hypernova collection um there's new face products so it includes eight Hypernova satin matte blushes six satin matte bronzers one mist thing setting spray and then a B1 blush brush and a B2 bronzer brush. I'm actually like, as far as the, some of the shades in here, she has like a corally orangey blush shade and it is really stunning. Like that is really pretty. Some pictures it looks like it has a sheen and some pictures it looks like completely and totally matte. She has a really good range of blushes in here as well. Like they're really nice. They look beautiful. Like she has like an orange one, a really poppy bright pink one. Um, that one's like beautiful for Valentine's Day. And then she has like almost a mauve looking one, which is also like, that's my type of blush. I love like very mauve blushes. And it looks like she has a really good range of blush shades and also bronzer shades. These just look really pigmented, really beautiful. We don't know the price of these. It's not listed in here. But the thing that's really intriguing me is those blush colors. They look really beautiful. And then also the bronzers. I really haven't heard. I haven't really seen a lot of reviews on her complexion products. I know she just had a foundation that went like completely viral in 2023 and that one was like really, really good. So I'm, I'm excited to see if this gets good reviews or not. I'm the type of person, especially with REM Beauty because it's been so hit and miss with like different things, I would probably wait for the reviews to roll out before I made like a very definitive decision on purchasing these specific products because I've seen reviews of the foundation, everybody raves about it. I've seen reviews of her eyeshadow palettes and everybody hates them. So like I would I'm I would not right away purchase this. This would be like one of those informed decision purchases and also really looking into my collection and seeing if I have something like these because like I said, some of her formulations have been hit or miss. At least that's what I've seen across the beauty space. Like, I'm hopping on over to Indie Makeup Hotspot. We were just looking at Trend Mood, but I wanted to look at Indie Makeup Hotspot as well because they like to feature a lot of independent. They love featuring independents. I mean, they're Indie Hotspot. So they, they feature all independently owned makeup brands. And Adept Cosmetics is coming out with a new eyeshadow palette. It is called the Flying Fiddles palette. Um, it has 15 shades, four blendable pigmented mattes, one multi-chrome, four shimmery dual chromes, and six shimmers. It's launching the day that I am filming this. And I, so I looked at this palette and I love the outer packaging so much, like that black lace packaging. It's very grungy. I feel like this eyeshadow palette is like a grungy neutral lover's dream. Like if you look at this, it really is. But the one thing I'm noticing about this palette is, is that it's very shimmer heavy. It's it's not a balanced palette by any means. So if you're the type of person who likes having a palette that has a lot of mattes or has like, you know, a balance between mattes and like multi-chromes or dual chromes or shimmery type of shades, then this palette may not be for you because it only has four. Four pigmented blendable mattes. And I'm the type of person who likes, don't get me wrong, like I love a good sparkly eyeshadow, but I need some good mattes to work with. And this one comes with like a really dark brown, really deep blue, like I'm almost a mauve looking color and then like a warm brown shade. And these are all like dark to like medium shades. And on somebody who is very fair toned like me, these are not transition shades that I use on my eyes. They're usually more shades that I use on like the outer corner or as an eyeliner or or on my lower lash line. These aren't shades that I typically use every single day. Like I think there's like one shade that I would use as like possibly a transition shade. But the rest of these mattes just they don't look like they would translate well for somebody as pasty pale as me. And then that's it. That's all the mattes you get. I really like playing with mattes. Like I love building a look. 
with matte eyeshadows and then just putting a little bit of shimmer on my lids like in the middle as a halo eye or in the inner corner like I love that I've heard of Depth Cosmetics as an amazing formula don't get me wrong but the fact that it only comes with four mattes in a 15 shade eyeshadow palette that bothers me a little bit typically at the end of the year in December we see so many makeup releases because we get holiday releases and then in January we really don't get a lot of releases because December was so busy and usually starting you know February and onward that's when things start ramping up again I can't wait to see more of what is released in 2024 I kind of have a feeling that some trends are also coming back from you know a decade ago and I'm, I'm really excited to see it but those are some of my unfiltered thoughts and opinions on new makeup releases. I hope you guys like this video. If you want to see more content like this, leave me a comment down below. Please consider subscribing before you go, and I hope I get to see you again. Bye!